I wanted to play a video for you because this may be the genuinely funniest thing I saw all week. Because on the day after the shooting occurred, Kenneth Copeland, the very wealthy Christian televangelist, he was doing an already scheduled, I don't want to say rally, that sounds political, but he was doing a whole event where they just, they, they whip the crowd into a frenzy and then tell them to donate money. And it was Kenneth Copeland and his daughter, Terry, who does a lot of these with him, and Terry's husband, George. And all three of them were on stage. And at one point, they wanted to get the audience to pray, pray for Trump. And the thing is, will it do anything? No, of course not. But I get where they're coming from. That seems like a pretty predictable thing for them to do. I'm going to play you a little bit of that prayer because I just want you to see what they did, and I don't want to tell you anything more about it. But here is how they prayed for Donald Trump on Sunday night, the day after that occurred, okay? We're going to pray right now over President Trump's ear. And the others, yes. that are critically wounded. And the others as well. So let's start with him. Put your hand over your ear. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over Mr. Trump right now. And we thank you for an accelerated healing process. Lord, I thank you that Jesus healed an ear. Well, he can do it right now with President Trump. And there'll not be one sign, not one thing, Lord, that will even tell that he was shot at. It's a cult. I mean, what the hell? They're literally holding their right ear as if that's going to make it better. I know some of you noticed that Kenneth Copeland on the left side over there on your screen was holding his left ear. Does that mean Trump gets hurt more? I'm not sure how the logic works on that. Uh, Kenneth Copeland also, when he was speaking right after that, he cited the story of a guy named Malchus, who is a Bible character, a servant, whose ear was cut off by one of Jesus's disciples as a way to like delay the arrest of Jesus. And Jesus supposedly sees that and he's like, what the hell are you doing? Stop hurting this Malchus character. And then Jesus like did some voodoo magic and healed the ear. And that was supposedly the last miracle Jesus performed before he was crucified. So Kenneth Copeland spoke about that too, uh, suggesting that, uh, he said, Lord, I thank you that Jesus healed an ear. Well, he can do it right now with President Trump. And there will not be one sign, not one thing, Lord, that will even tell that he was shot at. Which is one thing for him to say that. But of course, over the past week, what did we see? We saw Trump with obviously a bandaged ear, which totally makes sense. But then you saw all the Republicans or a bunch of Republicans in attendance at the convention also wearing fake bandages on their ear as if, I don't know what that's for. It's weird. It's a weird way to honor him. I've sometimes heard Republicans say that the 2020 election, there's no way the, the results were as they were because the people who love Trump openly display it. And there's no way more people like Joe Biden, who won the popular vote, because like it's not like Biden supporters wear Biden shirts like with his face on it or go to rallies with Joe Biden. It's like, yeah, because we have jobs because we're not part of a cult because we don't worship the dude. We're just hoping to push the policies in a certain direction. Um, but here, what do you see at the RNC? Again, it's a personality cult. It's kind of incredible, like I said, to watch all these people mistake Trump's insanely good luck and moving his head at the right time for divine intervention. Because, again, there's another Trump fan who got murdered at that same rally. Innocent guy. Um, Kenneth Copeland also said that day that uh, God helped deflect the bullet. As far as I can tell, there's no evidence the bullet was deflected. It's almost... It's incredible to watch how they are talking about Trump and how they are praying for Trump without even bringing up Trump's own role in fomenting the political environment in which we now find ourselves, where he just raises the temperature everywhere he goes. Everyone, you're either with him or you are the enemy. 
and he riles up his entire base. Like I'm recording this right now. I don't know if Trump has spoken yet. He's he's scheduled to speak at the RNC later tonight. But for all the talk about unity on the right, like, you know, as well as I do, that if not tonight, then within a few days, Trump is going to go right back to saying the worst things imaginable about the highest profile Democrats, because that's what he does. That's what his base does. Um. I just wanted to show you that clip because I'm telling you the idea of watching Christians just like, huh, huh, great. Now Trump's ear is healed. Maybe God could have prevented the bullet, maybe, from getting anywhere close there. How about that? No, God wanted the assassin to shoot and then kind of miss Trump and hit some innocent dude. That's the plan God had in store. It is wild to me that that is the actual narrative that Christians, conservative Christians, are spreading on the right. I'll pause there. <laughs> what else we got here? <laughs> Friends, friendly Romans, countrymen, lend me your ear. I heard someone say, like, there is no way uh, Trump's ear was injured like a Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, like, chew it up, spit it out. Like, there's no piece of Trump's ear uh, that will be separate from his body. Because if there was, he would have sold it by now to the highest bidder because he will cash in on anything. Just like he's already cashed in on shirts with his picture, with the raised fist and all that stuff. Did they even mention the others injured? Yeah, in like, as a side note, it's never part of the narrative that says this is divine intervention. They don't mention it in that sentence. They'll say Trump was saved. Hallelujah. God wanted it. God wanted Trump to be saved. God ha is looking out for Donald Trump. They'll say all of that. And then maybe in a separate part of the speech, they'll say, oh, and by the way, uh, that other dude died for reasons. God wanted that too, apparently. Like, there's no logical consistency because it's religion. It's not meant to be logical. The ear bandage thing really does follow cult behavior. I thought it was just one dude acting silly the first time I saw it. And then the next time it was like a whole bunch of people and they were handing them out outside the RNC. How, and how messed up do you have to be to want to put that on? What is that a symbol of? Like, I know this is an old joke, but the idea that for a lot of Christians, they will wear the symbol of the cross. They'll wear the crucifix that Jesus supposedly died on. It's like you're wearing a symbol of the thing he died on of all the ways to remember Jesus. That's a horrible way to remember him. And yet that's the symbol they're going with. And it's the same thing. Like, let's say you're Donald Trump. Sorry, but let's say you're him. Is that really the thing you want to see reminders of your near death experience? Like, I'm sure Trump does because they all look weird to be like him. But also, I don't know. I don't want to be reminded of the worst potential moment of my life. That seems like a bad idea. <laughs> he had sneakers up for sale the next day. Only afterwards did Trump call the widow. Yeah, Joe Biden reached out to the widow of the guy who died. She didn't want to talk to him because she's a Republican. Or she said my husband wouldn't have liked that. And only like a day or two later did Trump actually reach out. He could have reached out. Like he was fine. He was back up and running. But he didn't call her. He didn't think about her until some campaign staffer was like, you you got to make a phone call for two seconds. Um, and yeah, I think he did. You're right. He did have sneakers up for sale, maybe with his image on it, uh, selling for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Ridiculous. Like, can you do you remember back in the day when that's not how we treated politicians? It was better. Wasn't great, but it was better. 